that work today. So shoulders back and down, coming into your mountain pose, toes straight ahead, knees going toward the toes. And make sure your hips are nice and open, sitting bones toward the floor, core activated with the ribs toward your spine and up. Shoulders back and down, crown toward the ceiling. And what happened to my video? It's not in the right place. Okay, let's try that again. So go ahead and line up everything, core activated and inhale, arms to shoulder level. Stretch out through your fingertips. Exhale, hands to your heart, elbows slightly back to keep your heart open. Inhale out to the front, shoulders down, and then clasp your hands gently behind you, fingertips together, push them to the floor, lift your heart, stretch your head back. And exhale, pivoting over. Bring your hands up and your head down. Bend your knees slightly or straighten them and get a stretch on the back of your legs. Move your chin around, release your neck. And then slowly from the bottom of the spine, chin slightly in, work your way up. And come into that upper body back bend, dropping your shoulders, pushing your head slightly back, but don't lift your chin too high. Spread your toes, just relax into that back bend. You'll be doing a lot of those today. And then inhale upright, release your arms. Take a moment feeling what's going on internally and keep that focus. Again, arms at shoulder level, hands to your heart, stretch to the front and clasp your hands behind you. Again, shift those fingers one position over, push the hands down as you lift your heart and stretch your head back and then pivot at your hips coming all the way down. Leap it as far as you'd like to get that low back stretching a little bit more. Forehead in maybe a little further toward your legs. And then again, knees bent, ribs up, sitting bones down, and wind slowly back up into the back bend. Stretch your head, keep that base of your skull down, back of your neck stretching. So no lifting that chin too high, lift your heart. And then inhale upright, release your arms, and just take a moment feeling internally how that's working for you today. Side stretches next. So bring your arms out again. Keep the shoulders down, palms up, hands above your shoulders. Pass the hands, clasp them, and bring the arms back by your ears. Everything straight, facing forward, and lean over to one side. Push the foot you're leaning away from down for that extra stretch through the ribs. Feel that whole spine moving sideways. Take a breath. And on an inhalation, come on up. Keep the shoulders down. Switch your other hand to the front. And again, pull your arms by your ears and stretch your whole body. Sitting bones down, crown up as you lean to the opposite side. Push the foot you're leaning away from down. Make sure you're not leaning forward. And feel those ribs open again. And then inhale to the top and release. Sides a little bit more open as we get ready to do our twists. So really get that spine stretching apart so it's got room to twist. Arms at shoulder level, palms up, hands above your shoulders, clasp your elbows. Arms again by your ears and stretch out through your elbows and head, but down with your shoulders and sitting bones. Exhale, turn to your twist. Take a breath and exhale over in the twist. So keep the weight on both feet, spread your toes out, keep your arms by your ears, lift your sitting bones for the back of your body, stretch. And then keep the weight on both feet as you come back up in the twist and into that upper body only for the back bend. So shoulder blades down, looking up and lifting your heart, but make sure your low back isn't overworking here. Keep your arms by your ears. Inhaling, come upright, exhale around to the center and switch your arms. And again, lengthen through the spine and exhale to the other side. Take one more breath in and pivot on over as you exhale. 
Deepen as far as you'd like. Keep your arms by your ears. Pull your body towards your leg, but keep the weight on both feet as much as you can. And again, slowly in your twist, work your way back up. Lengthen, lifting the heart, pulling the elbows back, shoulders down, and upper body back then as you're twisting. And then inhale to the top, exhale around to the center, arms up into extended mountain, shoulders still down. And we're going to that swan dive. So arms at shoulder level, just pivot at your hips, chest bleeding slightly. Stretch it out straight, everything spine, arms, and legs. And then drop it in right bone, just hang, soften your knees a little bit. Pull in further if you'd like that back to stretch in the forward position. And then arms to the front. And slowly wind up from the bottom of the spine. Again, bringing your shoulders back and down and returning into mountain pose. So we're just going to warm the spine up a little bit for those back bends. So bring your hands onto your back with the heel of your palm at about the bottom of your shoulder blades, fingertips down toward your waist for some support in that low back. Pull your elbows toward each other and feel that front of your body open through the heart. And then keep the hands pressing just gently on that low back. Lift your chin slightly, but not too much. Remember, we don't want to crunch the back of the neck. And lift your heart. Push your head back. Keep your hips over your ankles. And come as much into a back bend as your body wants. Take a breath. Feel the front of your thighs, front of your hips opening a little bit more. Feel that back contract. And then chin towards your chest, inhale and come on back up. Just feel a little bit more circulation through that spine. And then bring your arms to shoulder level, palms up, hands over your shoulders, palms together. Look at your thumbs coming into that unsupported back there, just lifting your heart. Exhale, hands to your heart, pivot on over, and drop into ragdoll. Slide your hands up under your knees, press into your shins just gently, knees straight, elbows straight, and spine straight. Halfway up stretch. Feel that core supporting your back. Exhale down, bend your knees, and come all the way to the floor into our child pose transition. Hands, palms up at your feet, forehead down toward the floor. Feel that good stretch. Exhaling and relaxing. And then inhaling, sit up. And let's come into staff position for a quick warm up for the hips. So sitting bones behind you, press out through the bottoms of your feet and keep everything stacked for support core working to support that low back particularly. And we'll bring one foot up to that opposite thigh. Keep pressing up through the bottom of the foot and let this knee come toward the floor, warming up the hip a little bit more. You can bring this leg over to the side a little bit if that's going to help you release through the hip a little bit more. Or you can remember pad behind you as well. Take a breath, just relax. Let the knee come down at its own pace, so don't stress and strain and push it. Just add a little weight if you want with your hands, but don't push. And just let that knee go down as much as your hip allows, relaxing into it. And then bring your foot and knee into your hands or pull in closer with your arms around the leg and just work that rotator a little bit back and forth. So feel it, it's getting a little warmer, making it easier to do things. And then as you exhale, release that leg. The yoga of it is to notice the difference. So be aware of how one side feels compared to the other, and know that in yoga, we're gonna balance that and work the other side. So bring the opposite foot to your upper thigh as much as it wants to go in, and let that knee all toward the floor. Again, keep pushing out through the heel of that front leg, toes pulling back, 
pull it over to the side for a little bit easier hip work if you want to. And just again, let the knee come as far toward the floor as it likes on this side. Weight of your hand, not pressure if you want to. And just keep breathing and relaxing. Notice where the tension is. Let it go as you exhale and it'll release a little bit further, maybe. Don't force it, just incrementally remember it's just that little bit each time that helps you improve. So again, bring your foot up and knee up or leg into your arms and work it back and forth. Feel that hip getting a little looser as you move it, just gently, as much or as little as you want. The closer you pull the leg or the higher, the more intense it feels. So don't do that if you need a little gentleness today. Take a breath. And exhale that leg back in. Take a moment, feel in your body. Notice your hips. And let's work the little low back a little bit more. So bring your feet to the end of the mat. Keep that core activated for support as you slowly lower your lower back onto the floor and then your shoulder blades and then finally your shoulders and your head. Take a moment there. Getting settled and situated. Feet hip width apart. Bend your knees, sitting by slightly toward your heels. Press your back down. Just bend your heels in near your sitting bones. And knees straight up. So remember, you may need to roll in at the top of the thighs to make sure that those knees don't spread apart. So we're going to work that low back a little bit. It's going to strengthen your low back and tone your abs a little bit. So press that whole spine to the floor. Pushing the sitting bones slightly further toward your heels. Everything connected. Feel those abs working as you pull down. And then we're going to tuck the sitting bones back down as you lift your ribs up and get that space under your back. So as much or as little of an arch as you want. You can do whatever you want with your arms. You can keep them here to notice what's going on. You can bring them out. You can keep them at your side. It doesn't matter. Sitting bones toward your heels, pressing that whole back down, really feeling those core muscles working, and then inhaling and lifting, getting that arch strength in the lower back. So just back and forth, a little or a lot, depending on what your spine needs. This is physical therapy work that is recommended for strengthening the spine. So we just want to make sure that low back is working as well as it can. Take a breath, working with it, exhaling, pressing down, inhaling, arching up. This is a really good one to do for like a really long time as that warm up in the morning, but of course we don't have any time during class. So this is just a sample. So cut back to neutral, extend your legs out, bring your arms overhead. Yeah, yoga sit up. So bring your arms up, Lift your heart, pulling your whole upper body up. Reach for the ceiling and then reach for your toes. Feel that low back getting a good stretch there. And then inhale, sitting up and coming back into child's pose. So hips back on your heels again. Just take a moment to let things stretch out. And then arms out in front of you. Give it up onto your hands and knees. So knees hip width apart, wrist elbows and shoulders lined up. Get that core working, so ribs up toward your spine, supporting that low back so you're not sinking down. But you've got those sitting bones and crown reaching away from each other. Nice straight back as much as you can. Yeah, it's table position. No, we're not going to stay here. We're doing pigeon pose by request. So we're going to bring the left knee forward, or the right knee forward, right rather, between your hands and slide that left leg back. So as you do that, what you're going to feel is you're going to feel that left leg hip flexor on the front of the leg starting to stretch a little bit. And then we're going to move the right knee way over toward the right side of the mat. And we're going to bring that heel forward as much as you want. You can go perpendicular to your body with that shin if that works for you. 
And then sink the hip bones evenly down toward the floor, chest forward, looking to the front, letting that hip flexor get a good stretch and letting that hip rotator on the right leg get a good workout as well. So if this starts to feel like it's a little bit more than you need, you can slide your hands forward and come onto your forearms with your elbows under your shoulders. And again, just even at those hips, letting them sink. It's a little bit of release to both the hip flexor and the hip rotator. So remember, hip rotator, right leg, that bent knee version, and straight leg behind you, that's the hip flexor getting work. So this is a double process in your pigeon. If you love pigeon and you want more intensity, you can stay up on your hands with the shoulders above your wrists. And if you want, you can arch up even more, pushing your chest slightly forward, getting a little bit more work going on in that low back. So remember, lots of things going on in Pigeon. Just keep those hip bones as sinking evenly as you can. Try to make sure that that heel isn't right under your hips. You want to have it slightly in front of the hip bones so those hip bones can sink a little bit more, especially on that left side. And just breathe into it and relax. And if you want even more 19-year-old gymnast cheerleaders, you can bring your foot up behind you and touch the top of your head and the bottom of your foot together. I don't do that, so we won't go there. Shoulder blades down, chest forward, and looking up, whichever position you're in. And then if you're down on your forearms, slide your hands back under your shoulders. We're going to push into the hands and slide the front knee back and the back knee up, coming back into table. Lift those ribs, get that spine supported, everything nice and straight. And then push way back into extended child's pose, letting the hips release and your body stretch through the shoulders. Take a moment and breathe. And of course, we're going to balance the body. So once again, pivot on up. Come into your table position. Get that back supported, chest slightly down toward your thumb so you're not hunching up through the shoulders, and core activated, supporting your lower back. Stretch out, sitting bones and crown, lengthening away. And then the left knee this time comes forward between your thumbs, and your right leg slides back for that hip flexor stretch. So you're getting that lengthening through the front of the thigh on the right leg, you're taking your left knee way over to the side of the mat, and you're pulling that heel as far forward as it wants to go. As I said, it can be perpendicular to your body at the maximum. And of course, if you need padding under you, you can do that too. But you want to even up those hip bones right at the front top of your thigh area so that they're sinking evenly, letting that hip flexor get a good stretch and letting that hip rotator, good, get a good workout. Hands under your shoulders with the chest forward and slightly looking up, but remember not too lifting with the chin. You want that back of your neck stretching. And again, those of you who want a little easier work here, slide those elbows down to the floor under your shoulders. Chest forward, looking to the front, sinking your hips down toward the floor as far as they want to go, just relaxing into it, remember. We want to not push, not stress and strain, but relax because that's when things stretch more and you can sink further down toward the floor if that's what you like. And if you like more, you can still be up on your hands. And again, the same principles apply to sink by relaxing. Let everything go. Chest forward, keep looking to the front or slightly up, but don't lift that chin too high. And just let your whole body be in a nice little back bend here, exhaling, releasing tension, and just allowing your work through your whole body. Take a breath. And then pressing, pressing into your hand, uh, pulling your hands under your shoulders if you've got your forearms down. Pull your front knee back, back knee up, come back into table. 
Just arch up a little bit, getting a little release through that back. Sink back, hips to your heels, slide the hands forward. You can come all the way to wisdom pose with your head down toward the floor if you want. And just release. Take a breath. Exhale, tension. And then inhaling, sit back on your heels. And yeah, come back up. Hands to the front of the table and then slide your feet back. Roll your whole body down onto the floor. So start with your hips and then slowly roll down. Let your whole body come into the resting crocodile. Head to the side, hands to the sides, palms up, shoulders down. Take a breath, just relax. On an exhalation, turn your head to the opposite side. And again, just remember always you want to rest so that your neck is getting evenly stretched. Feet hip width apart, forehead to the floor, and your hands, palms down. And then rotate your face forward, lift the crown of your head, tuck the chin back a little bit so you're not overstraining that back of your neck. And just come up as high as your spine wants to support. And then push your feet back, lift your feet just a little bit off the floor. And again, chest forward and up, crown toward the ceiling, feet back, and then lift your hands just slightly off the floor, push them just a little bit more toward your toes. A little Superman pose, flying away. Now you can rotate your arms way up to the front, shoulder width apart, lengthening into that Superman pose, and bring your hands once more, rotating back toward your hips. Lift a little higher in that back bend if you love it. Just up, feet up, round to the ceiling. And then exhale the feet, the hands, and the whole upper body. When your forehead touches, bring your hands under your shoulders. And again, press up and back in the child's pose. Take a breath. Exhale and relax. Nice little forward bend there. Now we're acting our back bend. And then sitting up on your heels, bring your legs all the way to the end of the mat. Sitting bones behind you. And again, just that slow roll down onto your back. And as you get all the way to the floor, just take a moment, realigning, repositioning. Bring your arms to T position, shoulders down. Turn your hands, palms up or down for this one. And a little twist. So sitting bones towards your heels, bending your knees, heels in near your sitting bones, and knees straight up. Press your back down again, and lift your feet up off the floor just a little bit so those knees come above your hips. If you want a little low back work, you can cross your leg over. Just leave them next to each other and roll over to the side. Turn your head to the opposite side and just relax. Shoulders down, middle back twist, head turning, upper neck twist, and knees going toward the floor, lower back twist. Go wherever you need in your body and then just relax into it, exhaling any tension, just letting that twist happen. Deep breaths, tension out allowing that twist to release anything in the spine it needs to. And exhale and relax. And then heels toward your hips and roll onto your back. If you're crossing your legs, uncross. Straighten things out if you need to and cross the other way if you're crossing. And of course, we're going to balance and twist to the other side. So bring that knee over toward the floor. Shoulders down, head turning, and hands, palms up or down, whatever feels right for you. And again, just allow the twist to happen. Don't force it. Your knee may never make, knees may never work, make it to the floor. Put some padding under it if you need to for support, if that feels like it's overworking that low back. Head turning as much as your neck wants to. And again, keep those shoulders down, letting that whole middle back get the twist. Take a breath. 
Exhale, deepen as much or as little as you need on this side. And of course, when you're ready to release, bring those heels slightly toward your hips first and roll onto your back. Uncross your leg if you were crossed, feet to the floor, slide out and into corpse position for our relaxation. Shoulders down, hands, palms up, and just sit there or sink there, relaxing. So allow your middle section of your body soften and sink. Lots of work through that low back and core. And those hips as well. So hips and pelvis just kind of move side to side, letting everything get released and relaxed a little further. Shoulders down, hands, palms up, bring the toes together, and then just let them relax. Deep breath in. Exhale, just feel that body sink deeper into that surface beneath you and let everything go. Feel the hips, the pelvis, the back, places we did our work today. Bring that energy and awareness to that area and then exhale and let it go. And just allow your body to grow heavy and sink into that surface beneath you for support. Letting the earth embrace you. Let your body go from your awareness. And as it does, know that other thoughts will come to your mind. Let them go as well. It's the job of your mind to produce thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention to the content. At this moment, let the thoughts drift in and out as easily as your breath without awareness. Allow the breath to deepen and the thoughts to sink, drift away without attention as your body sinks deeper into that earth connection. And just that awareness of your body and your mind release, allowing your awareness to turn inward to that peace within. Feel your body, feel your mind, and just take a few moments to be peace. And if you have time to keep relaxing even longer today, take as much time as you have. If it's time to get ready for the rest of your day, just begin drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the one, to your body. As you breathe more deeply, just begin moving your body gently, however feels right for you today. As you breathe more fully and stretch more completely, and when you're ready for that final yoga hug of appreciation, sitting bones towards your heels, bending your knees, draw the heels toward your hips, and the knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around, give yourself that appreciative yoga hug, let your body know you. Appreciate its work in yoga today, and the work your body does for you every day. And when you've had enough of that hug and appreciation, bring your head and your feet to the floor, go over to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.